Hello everyone and welcome to the 31st Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering how we can work with NS popovers in Cocoa. And NS popover is a new th uh, thing that we have to work with in Lion. And I'm also going to be covering uh, one method from its delegate as well, how to implement that. And uh, so basically, if you don't know what an NS popover does or what it looks like, it's basically if you look at iCal for a few seconds here, and it's on your Mac if you didn't already know, and uh, you can hit the plus button and you'll see that you get basically this nice popover, which is NS popover, and uh, it basically is used to present new information that you know we wouldn't actually have in our, uh, uh, you know, in our interface otherwise. So, you know, instead of having this uh, thing anywhere else in our interface, we can just have a nice button at the top in our toolbar here, and we can just get present the user with new information that doesn't really need to be cluttering the interface at all times, because, you know, you're not always creating new events, so uh, you don't always need to have that up. So, uh, with that, we uh, can quit out of iCal if we want, and so we're going to be making a new Cocoa application, obviously, and we're going to be calling this just Lesson 31. And you'll notice that we are now using automatic reference counting, and for those of you who haven't been paying attention to the Objective-C tutorials, Lesson 35 and 36, I believe, were both on ARC, and uh, they're important tutorials for this because I'm not really going to be re-covering uh, ARC in this tutorial, so if you haven't watched those tutorials, make sure you do because obviously they're important. Alright, so um, anyway, for that, um, we're not going to be working in document-based applications, and we're not going to be doing core data, so go ahead and leave those unchecked as well. And we'll go ahead and save it there. And now we're presented with our new information here. So what we want to do is, uh, first off, we have our window, and like you saw in iCal, we basically had a button that when we pressed it, we then displayed our popover. And so I'm going to be showing you that, how that works, and also uh, with the delegate method, I'm going to be showing you how you can actually drag the popover. Uh, so if you kind of click on the popover and drag it away from where it is, it will form a new window, which is kind of a cool feature anyway. Uh, I don't know how often it would be used, but uh, it's one of those things that it's kind of cool. All right, so now that we have that, uh, we want to, of course, add our popover object. So to do that, we just have to say popover, and you'll see that you get the popover and view controller. And this is the one thing that's pretty interesting about NS popover is that it's not just NS popover. It also works with an NS view controller. So if you go ahead and drag this out over here like this, you'll see that it kind of splits into two different objects and you get the popover and the popover view controller. So what do these two objects do? Well, the popover, or NS popover, is an object that isn't, it's not like the other objects that we have in Cocoa, like buttons and things like that. It is actually totally different. And all it really does is can tell the popover kind of where it's going to display and also when it's going to close and a few other things. So it's really not responsible for all that much to do with the view or the content that's in the popover, the content is all managed by the view controller, which kind of makes sense. The popover just kind of tells the view controller to show our view, and the view controller kind of controls everything on the view, which uh, makes sense, because if we were to create an application and you had information in the popover, like buttons and uh, you know table views and stuff, you might want to be able to use the controller to talk to uh, the view that's on your popover. So uh, you can see that there's different uses for this. And I know I haven't actually covered NS view controller, but there's really not much we're doing in this tutorial, so I didn't really see the need to go into too much depth, but NS view controller, if you remember back to the NS window controller tutorials where we created a new window with an NS window controller, and the main idea with these uh, window and view controllers is that it con it controls a single object. So a view con or a window controller would control a single window and it interfaces uh, with that window. And then a view controller is pretty much the same thing. It interfaces with that single view. So let's just look a little bit at, uh, into the properties or what these things contain. So if you right click on the popover, you'll see it has an outlet to the popover view controller, which is our NS view controller right here. And if we right click on this, you'll see that there's an outlet 
to a view. And so the NSView controller, like I said, is responsible for uh, containing or uh, connecting to the view that we're going to be displaying. All right, so with that, now, of course, we have to add the view that we want to uh, have in our uh, our popover. So to do this, we just drag out a custom view, and we can just throw it on there like that. And it doesn't, it shouldn't be on the window because it's not actually part of the window. So make sure you either drag it into the tab bar over here or just drag it elsewhere in Interface Builder. All right, so we can expand this a little bit now, and we'll just throw in a label for this. So I uh, just go ahead and find a label, and we'll drag it into our view. And this is the popover. All right, so we're uh, getting pretty close to done here for setting this up. Of course now, like I said, the view controller is going to be the thing that manages this view. So we want to create that outlet from our NS view controller to our view object. So we can drag it over like that, and we'll make that connection. And so we're, uh, you know, for the most part, uh, pretty set with this. And of course, we have to have some way of activating this popover because it doesn't just pop out of nothing. So we want to have a button, of course, that we're going to click. So we'll drag out a little push button here. I'll throw it right in the center. And I'll just call this uh, Show Me the Popover. And that was my gangster voice for any of you who were wondering. All right, so now we have our nice little button there. And we have our view. So pretty much uh, our setup here is that our button, when it's pressed, is going to be triggering some IB action in our code. And then our code is going to say, well, okay, now display your popover. So that's kind of the layout of what we have. And there's one last thing I have to set up, though, is that our popover, by default, if you click on the popover object and go to the attributes inspector, you'll see that the behavior is set to application defined. And we actually want to switch this to transient. And the difference is that application defined will mean that your application has to specifically say when the popover will close. And so, uh, of course, it basically will control everything about the popover. But if you set it to transient, that means that if you click anywhere else outside of the popover, the popover will, popover will disappear like it does in iCal, which is what we want. All right, so now that we have all that, let's make some connections to our code here. And I'm going to switch over to our handy dandy, uh, whatever they even call this, assistant. And we have to make some IB outlets and some actions here. So we want to, of course, connect our popover so that we can tell the popover in our code, uh, you know, show yourself. So to do this, we can drag from the popover object. And by the way, I'm using the app delegate for this. You might notice that I didn't create any app controller, but I'm just keeping it simple. And I'm going to keep everything in the app controller or the sorry the app delegate for this tutorial. But if you want, go ahead and create the app controller like we usually do, and uh, it should work the exact same way. You just you know drag your app controller out to the bench here and uh, you know make your connections. All right. So uh, anyway, we're just for this tutorial working in the app delegate, and we want to create our popover outlet. So we're just going to say popover. And, uh, of course, we're now working in ARC, so that means we have strong and weak references. But I mentioned in the Objective-C tutorials that if you're working in a nib file, the nib file is basically the owner of all the objects that are in it. It creates all these objects when it starts up, and, uh, you know, it is the owner of all these objects. So we don't really want to create a strong reference because our code doesn't really own these objects. It's just referencing them. So we want to use a weak reference for our popover. And we can just connect it like that. All right, so now that we have that, the next part is, of course, to have the IB action for the button. So we'll drag that over here, and I will create an action. And I'll just call this show popover. And we'll create it just like that. And I'm just going to move this down here to there. All right, so there we go. Now we have our method for showing the popover and an outlet to the popover itself. So now we can switch over to our app delegate.m and we're going to start coding a little bit into this. So uh, what we want to do here is we want to, uh, in our show popover method, we want to be able to, of course, show the popover. So I'm going to kind of quickly just switch to the code view here. Uh, I know this is kind of awkward, but uh, instead of 
doing, uh, just keeping that window open just for space wise. I'm going to go back to this code view. All right, so anyway, our show popover method again is what happens when we click the button. So, what we want is to display the popover. And again, I showed you in the Objective C tutorials, if you were wondering why there's no instance variable, I showed you how if you synthesize a property in uh, in these uh, in Coco now or Objective C, I should say, uh, basically it'll create the instance variable for you. So that's that's what I did there. So if we want to say to our popover that it should display itself whenever uh, you know we are clicking this button, we'll tell our popover that it needs to show relative. I can't spell show relative to rect of view preferred edge. That's the whole method name. So what does this all mean? Well, it basically tells the popover where it's going to display relative to whatever clicked it. So if I want to say uh, the first parameter here is an NS rect, which just means the bounds of our um, uh, bounds of our uh, the button. Right? I'm losing losing my brain here. I can't even remember words. But uh, yes, we want the bounds of our button so that our popover knows uh, where it should display itself. So that's what the first parameter is. And you'll know that we don't have an outlet to our button, but we don't really need to because you may remember may remember that the sender object that's passed in is whatever calls or whatever is uh, sent sending this action. And uh, that's why it's called the sender. So the per the thing that sends this object is our button itself. So we can just say uh, sender bounds, and that will get the bounds of the uh, the button itself. So the next part is of view, and this basically just means the view that uh, you know you're talking about here. And this is also again just the button that you're referring to. So you're just going to pass in the sender object again, and because NS button is a subclass of NS view, you can just pass it in like that. So that's all it's all it's looking for there. So the bounds of the rectangle itself, and the specific uh, sender object. All right. So then the last part is what edge of this view that is clicking this thing, or our button, do we want to display the popover on? And there's four different constants for the all different edges, and the one we're going to use though is max, ns max, x, and edge. It's, there we go. So the other ones are min, x, edge, and then max and min, y, edge, and you can fiddle around with those uh, to figure out where to display your popover. Okay, so that's all we really have to do though to get this to work, and that should show our popover relative to where our button is on the NS Max Edge X. All right, so now we should be good, and we should be able to run this without any problems. So if we go ahead and hit Show Me to Popover, you will see that we get the popover, which is pretty cool. And if we click on it, nothing happens, but if we click somewhere else, it will go away. And I should also point out that if we drag this over here, and if we click it, it already also knows that it shouldn't display on the right side because it doesn't have enough room, but it'll display on the opposite side for you. So it's nice in that respect. All right, so now that we have that, um, you know, we're almost set here to go, and um, that's what I wanted to show you for that anyway. And the next part was part of the delegate and I don't know why I'm showing you all this stuff. I wanted to just show you uh, how you can create uh, the popover and form it into an NS window. So there is a delegate method to do this, and it basically just asks the delegate to return a window that will become the popover. So how this works is when we click the button, the popover will display, and if we drag out on the popover, it will become an NS window. It's kind of cool, and I just thought it was a worthy thing to show. So if we just type in NS window here, drag out a window, and we'll just drop it into our bar over here. And um, there's a few things we have to change with this. First of all, we'll change the size so it's closer to this view. So um, I'll just kind of eyeball this so that it's close. And we'll drag this over. And you don't actually have to make it the same size, but I just think it makes for a slightly better transition anyway. And, you know, if you're using it. Usually you wouldn't really change the size anyway. So I'm just going to copy this label over here and I'll just change it to be, uh, this is the popover in window. Alright, so now that we have that, we have our window, we have our view, but we have to change a few things on the window here before uh, we hook this all up. So what the window has to do, uh, if you click on the window, 
and you go to the attributes inspector, there's two things we have to change. We don't we don't want the window to be visible at launch because that means when the application starts up, the window will be already there, and we don't want that. So we just want to deselect that. And we also want to deselect release when closed because when we click the little X button, we don't really want the window to be released, which means it'll uh, basically go back into memory and we don't want to free the object. We want to keep it around, so we don't want it to release when we X out of it. So uh, that's basically all we have to do for that. And the last step, of course, is to create that connection to our app delegate. So uh, let's do this again in our uh, awkward little uh, screen size here. And I'll connect our window object to our code. So I'll drag out from the window, and oops, I'm not even in our, this is our interface for our app delegate, which we, of course, want. So we'll drag this out over here, and we'll create a new property. And this will be our popover window. And again, this is going to be a weak reference, but you'll see that when I actually connect this, it's going to change to an unsafe, unretained reference. And the reason behind this is that NS window actually doesn't uh, or can't implement weak references for whatever reason. I don't know the you know real specifics behind it, but uh, Apple just says that uh, it can only use a sign, which is now deemed as unsafe, unretained. So uh, basically, it it works basically the same way as a weak reference, but it's just it's not a weak reference. And uh, I'm not going to go into the specifics for this because that's obviously not what this tutorial is for. So the next part for implementing this delegate, uh, like I said before, was so that we can um, uh, basically we want to drag out the popover and we want to display this window. So the NS popover itself actually has a delegate, so we can form this in our uh, interface builder instead of doing it in code. And all we have to do is drag out its delegate outlet to our app delegate because that's the code that's going to implement the method that it, or the message that it sends. So there we go, we'll make that connection right there. And so, uh, again, if you're confused on how delegates work, uh, I know I haven't really covered uh, specifically making one, but a delegate just means that the object that has a delegate, like our pop over here, the delegate is going means that you're just going to ask another object for information back, and that's basically how it works. So uh, what we want to do now that we have all this made is that we'll flip back over to just the code view here. And what we want to do is, of course, implement our delegate method. So I'm actually going to uh, tell our app delegate, though, that we're going to implement NS popover delegate. So we'll say NS popover delegate. We're going to implement that. And then we're going to flip over to our implementation. And I'm going to implement the one method that is going to, or that we care to uh, answer to. So the method is a detachable window for popover. And basically how this works is that it's just going to ask or you're going to return the NS window that it wants uh, whenever you drag the popover. So to do this, we're just going to return, say uh, return popover window, like that. And so we should be all set uh, for what this is asking. So once again, to kind of run through how delegates work, our popover is going to set our app delegate to be its delegate. And it, well, all that really means is that whenever our popover wants to know more information about how it's going to operate, it's going to send a message to our app delegate, specifically this detachable window for popover, and we're going to give back the window that it's going to display. So that's basically all that's really doing. All right, so we can go ahead and run this now, and we'll see that we get, this is the popover, and we can drag it out, and look at that, we get a nice little window. Let me do that again. Whoop, look at that. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I really had to show you for the NS popover object, and there's a little bit more you can look into there. But um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I will see you next tutorial.